Hey guys, welcome to Film Learner Masterclass, a spin-off show unlike Joey that's actually decent. And today we're talking about colour correction, not because it's the next logical step in post-production, but because you guys keep asking for it. So let's talk about it, shall we? First off, there are two different types of colouring in filmmaking. There's colour correction and colour grading. Color correction is used in many ways, but the primary focus is to make sure that all the individual shots of a scene match. In many movies and TV shows, scenes may be filmed over the course of many hours or days or even months with reshoots, and in order for all the shots to blend seamlessly together in the editing process, they have to all look as if they were shot on the same day. Color grading, on the other hand, is giving your film a specific look or feel, such as a day for night filter, or any of the looks in Magic Board Suite, Film Convert Pro, or the Lumetiri presets in Adobe Premiere. This is what most of you think of when I say color correction. On top of that, I know that most of you just want to know how to achieve that film look, and of course, a way to do that is through color grading. But let's back it up a bit and first talk about color correction, because it's important for any of you who do any work on a green screen. Why? Because you have to blend your footage into your background, you young whippersnapper. One of the biggest mistakes anyone can make with their keyed footage is just slapping on a magic bullet filter and thinking, hmm, job's done. So let's check out an example. Okay, so we're in After Effects and my footage is keyed out and ready to go. If I turn on the background layer, you can see it has a bit of a blue tint to it, which our keyed footage doesn't exactly blend in with. So how do we fix this? Well, we color our keyed footage to match the background. So let's head up to Effect, Color Correction and grab Curves. We'll then select the blue channel and bump it up until we're happy. Looks much better and blended. We can now add an adjustment layer and add our final color grade that will further blend these two together. Seems pretty easy, right? Because it is. Another example of color correction would be color isolation, like this. The process for removing all the color from the shot except for this shirt. So here's how we do that. So here we are in Premiere Pro. We'll just click on an effect, type color and find leave color down here. Let's drag and drop that on our footage. From there, we'll change the match colors to using hue. We'll then grab the eyedropper tool and select the part of the shirt that represents the color of the whole. There we go. Next, let's crank that amount to decolor up to 100%. Now, as you can see, Goku's outfit still has some blue showing. So let's crank the tolerance down to 10%. Ideally, you want to remove any similar colors to your isolation color before you shoot. But hey, this is only a quick example. But that's all you have to do. Easy, huh? Now, as far as color grading goes, as I mentioned earlier, you've got a few options when it comes to getting a cool look for your film. In fact, we now have plugins that ape characteristics of individual film stocks, so it's even easier to get a film look. Because the base of the filter is an actual film. Three of these I use on a regular basis are Film Convert Pro, Magic Bullet Film, and the Lumetary presets in Adobe Premiere Pro CC. Two of these are paid plugins, and the other one comes with Premiere Pro, which you're paying for, so... I guess it's kind of paid too. I'm sure there are plenty of others out there, Magic Bullet Suite, DaVinci Resolve, um, HitFilm have their own color grader, but I'm merely talking about the ones I have on my PC and what I use. So let's go through the process of color grading a shot and giving it a few different looks. So for starters, you can see that the shot I have here is pretty flat. The colors don't exactly pop out at you, the blacks aren't crushed, and the whites aren't all blown out. This is the optimal image to start grading with because you have a lot of range to work with. And by that, I mean you can add a nice subtle grade, or you can push your color grade to an extreme point and you won't end up breaking your image with a crappy look. Now as far as choosing a color grade goes, well, that's entirely up to you. In most cases, I simply choose the color palette I like the look of, nothing more in depth than that. Having said that, there are some situations where choosing a color grade may aid in selling a location or a character's emotion. For example, if I want to sell that the scene is shot in a hot, harsh environment, you might add a yellow filter and up the exposure on the image to illustrate the heat. If it's a cold, sterile environment like an office or a hospital, you might darken the image slightly and add a tint of blue. Now you can do this the easy way. Just grab a preset filter, slap it on your footage and be perfectly happy with the look. Or you can go a bit more in depth and tweak the individual settings in that filter to make something a bit more unique. For example, say I like this filter, but I want to add some more contrast to the image. I simply open up the filter settings and bump up the contrast. It might not seem like it's much of a difference, but I'm happy with it and that's kind of the point of colouring achieving an image that's pleasing to you. Now I know I'm talking about colouring in pretty general terms, but just like last week's editing episode, it's totally deliberate, because like it or not, there's no steadfast rules when it comes to adding that final touch to your scenes. You've just got to experiment, try a whole bunch of looks until you go, 
that's the one. But that's my time again, gang. We have one more masterclass left in this series, and that's all about adding sound and music to your film. But in the meantime, if you enjoyed this episode, feel free to like and share it up. As always, if you're new, the subscribe button remains steadfast and ready for your click. Here's to Facebook, here's to Twitter, and I'll see you next week for the Masterclass finale. 